and on the cloud. Didn't say recording started, but I'm assuming it's recording, so we're good. Thank you. I'll go ahead and start. And I want to welcome everybody here. I am Bart Loser. I am Toastmaster District 55's uh, continuing Education Program Director. My job is to come up with interesting and helpful programs that are going to help you build your skills as a leader and build your skills as a Toastmaster, a speaker, just about anything that you can consider a skill you want to work on. Let me know and I can put together a presentation that we can have in our Continuing Education Program. This season, between now and December, we have eight programs going on in October, November, and December. So if you will go to the tmd.org, tmd55.org website, you can find out more through our calendar or go to the Continuing Education website, and you can find a listing of all those there. I do recommend that everybody pre-registers for each class. That way we can send reminders to people, as well as just give you a chance to see it and say, I want to sign up for that now. You can The moment you see it, you can sign up for it, even if it's a month or two away. So please do have a look at that schedule and sign up for our continuing education classes and put out the word that that's what we're here to do. We've got a great presentation today, and I want to welcome, we have three presenters. Uh, we'll start with Blanca Kelly, then we will move on with Darlene Cross, and then Desmond Calloway. All are DTMs, as well as highly experienced Toastmasters in the field of contests. And today's particular program is on the importance of early planning for a successful contest season. The contest season officially starts in December, although January are when most clubs begin having their contests. And I would recommend that for all clubs is to be thinking about planning your contests in January, because then in February, we will be in with our area contest, which is the next level up, where each area has five clubs, sometimes six, but we want to try to get all those clubs to send contestants. And this year, we have two particular con contests. One, as always, is our international speech contest usually a dramatic speech of five to seven minutes length. And we also will have a table topics contest, which means anyone can participate in that. You don't have to have any particular expertise or length in Toastmasters. You could have joined yesterday and participate in table topics the moment you're a Toastmaster member. And this will be a fun contest. Uh, and I would encourage everybody to get involved in your area contests both as contestants as well as players in that. And you'll find out more about that through our speakers for tonight. So I do want to start off with uh, having Blanca share her screen and I'll introduce Blanca Kelly. So if you could, and I believe it's Desmond who's sharing Blanca's screen. So if you would, and I'll make sure to see here, make sure that Blanca is listed and I will spotlight her for everybody as our primary speaker. And Desmond, when you're ready, I will go ahead and there, here's her screen. Excellent. So I wanna welcome everybody here to our first speaker on our panel. Thrilled to have a, a very experienced panelist, Blanca Kelly, who's been involved for many years as a leader at many levels for the district. I believe she is currently our Division F Director. And as you can see here on the listing, she's had lots of experience in the past, including being a past Division Director which is one of the highest levels that one can achieve as a leader in our district. And one I would hope everybody would seek to achieve one of these days because we all give back. And this is a great way to give back as a leader in the, in our particular district or uh, in any district, actually, you can be in several districts. Sometimes if you are doing a lot of online seminars, you can belong to our in a lot of the online meetings, you can go to meetings anywhere in the world as a member and participate, even if you're not a member of that club, you just need per some permission. So she's also was club extension chair, helping us to build new clubs, a past area director, which is the step just below a di uh, division director. And the area contests, like I said, are going to be in mostly in March, uh, I mean, in February, most of the area contests will be in February. Then in March, we'll start with our division contests, and then by April, May, we will be set to plan the district contest, which will be probably at the conference for the district as well. 
So I want to welcome Blanca. She's involved with many clubs, as you can see here, and she's very well equipped to teach us more about the importance of having great contests. Please welcome Blanca Kelly. Thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. My goodness. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here with you tonight. And tonight I'm going to start sharing as if someone in the audience is a first time club leader or first time district leader or first time for everything because sometimes we need refreshers. It never hurts to brush up on our skills. Even though I see some names here who are highly skilled Toastmasters. But I tonight I am going to share the good news with you. Why? Because 98 years of practice takes all of the guesswork out of contests. The theory of trial and error, error does not apply when conducting a Toastmasters speech contest. It just doesn't happen. Why? Because of all things, we have a rule book. This year's rule book has been updated and it will indicate all of the updates on there with a little asterisk. It is your Bible, adhere to it. It has everything you need to know. There is no guesswork. And the other thing is we do have a District 55 website that has any kind of checklist, Excel spreadsheet, and all forms necessary to conduct a contest. So therefore, there is no guesswork. All you have to do is primarily, uh, first of all, check eligibility. I, I should not neglect to tell you that you need to check the eligibility for your contestants. It's critical because then it, it, at the club level, that would be the beginning of it. And then it rolls down and we, we don't want that happening. We don't want to discourage anyone from suffering from an oversight on our part as contest chair, <clears throat> excuse me, the lead judge or anybody, any of the contest officials. So first and foremost, check the eligibility of your contestants. And if you don't find everything you need to know in the www.toastmasters.org uh, website, the rule book, our District 55 uh, website, guess what? There's always YouTube. You can spend hours and hours on YouTube and learn uh, quite a bit because everybody has a little different uh, way of doing things, but ultimately we all follow the same rules and regulations. Our second slide, uh, Desmond, would you uh, pre, uh, go to our, this is a speech contest basics for the newcomer, the nuts and bolts, which I've already covered the speech contest rule book. And as I have discovered recently, a Zoom master. What in the world is a Zoom master? Well, gee whiz, he's just a wizard like Desmond Calloway. He's a wizard at everything that's technical in nature. And Bart, I consider, I, I plan to, when I grow up, I want to be like Desmond Calloway and Bart Lozier. Oh, I, I am so, so uh, excited about learning from them this time around. It's, it's critical that you have someone who can troubleshoot, someone who can work the, the breakout rooms, uh, somebody who can uh, actually just conduct the uh, contest. Basically, I have, I have discovered from, from his desktop and make you look good. So first of all, get yourself a great Zoom master. There aren't that many to go around. So be the first one to pick up that phone, make the phone call and reserve that, um, that date and match it with your Zoom master's availability. Uh, otherwise, 
uh, you're going to have a difficult time conducting a contest. Agenda. Uh, I, I need to have something to stay focused. If those checklists of materials that you need to get, forms that you need to get, deadlines to meet, if that's not enough, focus on beginning your agenda. And then you just go a little at a time, fill in the blanks, and you'll be all set by the time you know it. Contest chair, oh, you have to check some, find somebody that you can really trust, your assistant. If you're a area director, get an assistant that you can really rely on and perhaps might know a little bit more than you do, but he'll make you, he or she will make you look good. Contest chairs are wonderful. And of course, chief judges, and they will find the other individuals to help you, other officials to help you run the contest. Timers, officials like timers, counters, and other uh, like sergeant at arms, very important to have that. Tie breaking judge, that kind of thing. Desmond, if you'll go to the next slide, please. Now, this is something that I'd like to share with you. Uh, those dates that are taken. So if you are planning a contest, I'm sharing this information so that you won't feel rushed, you know, when you're planning your, your date. And once you submit your area director's uh, uh, date for your contest, you have to make sure it doesn't clash with a, a DEC meeting or an executive council meeting or a leadership institute. I've provided some dates there for each division, having their, their TLIs coming up. Every, we have a crunch time. Uh, would you go to the, uh, the, the dates, Desmond? Okay. And then the division speech contests. So I'm providing this information so that you start looking at your calendar now uh, so that you can make sure that the, your contest officials will be able to make it on that day. It's, uh, as you can see, like uh, Bart mentioned, January, February, and March are cr crunch times because you do have to have a window of opportunity so that you will have time between your last contest and your district contest at, uh, during the conference. It's time for preparation and such. I will be more than glad to share this information with you if you don't have it. And that guarantees a, also a stress-free. And once you submit that information, it'll be approved because it won't be clashing with the, everybody else's events going on in the district. Uh, the next uh, slide, please. Now, there's, this is a sample agenda uh, that you can follow from beginning to end. In this case, it's an old one, but it says tall tales, but we will have table topics. So list the names on there. I uh, uh, took out the names of the previous contestants for privacy reasons, but it keeps you focused. I know it keeps me focused. That's something I need uh, so that I can go back to my checklist and make sure I always have two, two backups, either the agenda or the checklist, and go through them constantly, constantly, and update them because sometimes, for many reasons, sometimes your officials might be able to, uh, not, not really uh, able to attend for family reasons, medical reasons, and then you, you know which blank needs to be filled in as soon as possible. Your volunteers, next slide, please. And you will be guaranteed to have a successful speech contest. Once you follow these rules, these forms, remember 98 years of contest seasons. We're lucky that we only have one now. It used to be two, two contests per year. We were always preparing for contests. Not so anymore. So it takes the pressure off. 
that it's tr uh, not exactly trouble free, but guesswork free. It's been done before. Don't be afraid. It can you can, you can do it again this year. And hopefully you will find the necessary support that you need from your either uh, area, your division, or your district, or your club officers. There's always somebody there to support you. You're not alone. Any uh, Bart Loser, Mr. Moderator? Do we have a Q&A at this point? Congratulations. You yeah. yeah. I think we're we're good right now, and we'll hold some questions in for later. So okay. Let me just um, go ahead and so if you would un, uh, go ahead and turn this. There we go. Thank you very much, and I will unpin you. Let me remove the spotlight. There we go. <laughs> Welcome back, and thank you, Blanca. That was very uh, very helpful for a general introduction. And we do have as our next speaker, Darlene Cross. So let me just tell you a little bit about Darlene. Darlene Cross is a distinguished Toastmaster and she's been a member of Austin Toastmasters since 2015. That was my very first club. So uh, Darlene quickly got wrapped up in roles and volunteering because of the encouragement and energy of the club. It is one of the most amazing clubs I've been to. If you get a chance, go check it out on Tuesday nights. Darlene uh, also had, uh, uh, well, the club had persuaded her to be the annual banquet chair that they do every year, an amazing banquet, club contest chair. She was also an area director. Uh, she also participates in many district activities and branches out into other public speaking opportunities and entertainment adventures. She served as a club secretary, BPPR, uh, club president, area director. She's conducted several TLI trainings and chaired a position of the 2019 district conference. She contributes her success and growth to the support that she's received from every level of the Toastmasters program. And during the past seven years, Darlene has also made friends that she considers lifelong friends amongst her to Toastmasters. So one of the best places to find great quality friends. So I want to welcome Darlene Cross. And Darlene, I will go ahead and spotlight you as well. Let me see here. There we go. And you're on mute. So if you'll unmute yourself and it looks like you're sharing your screen, we will be ready. So I want to please welcome Darlene Cross. Uh, thank you, Bart, for that wonderful introduction. And it was perfect, if I do say so myself. <laughs> thank you, Blanca, for covering the nuts and bolts of a meeting. I, well, Darlene is my name and enthusiasm is my game. And I was asked to offer some insight that I believe helped me chair and mentor some of our past uh, contests. And anyone can follow these suggestions. So you, you don't have to be the contest chair to help participate in giving a, a great club contest. So let's get started. My screen is not. Um, is it um, sharing? Here we go. Think Sound okay, the there we go. There it go. There it goes. All right. So thank you big picture for a successful club contest. I mean, it doesn't matter if you have a large club or a small club, a well-run contest will be remembered by everyone and it will be appreciated by the advancing speakers. Make sure you follow the rules because they're there for a reason. You can be formal and casual at the same time. Make everyone feel comfortable, but follow the format. Everything you need to know is available on the district website. And Blanca outlined the importance of the structure of a contest. But knowing the outline is a big confidence booster. And you don't have to do, you don't have to do this. You get to do this. And you get to learn along the way. I love this quote. The touchy little computer in it. <laughs> I love this quote by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up the men to gather the wood and divide the work and give orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. 
How do you do that? You talk about your vision for the contest, encourage participation, huckleberry fit in them, build confidence, and point out their strengths. For example, you could say, Betty, I think you would be a great timer. You're always so calm and focused. It would really help knowing that you are at the clock. Give people confidence. Let them know what their strengths are. Enthusiasm is the key. Contest seasons uh, are, it's a contest is a transactional event. And the sooner the re you realize this, the better. I mean, you need to let people know that your club exists. And you do this by visiting other clubs and helping out at their meetings. You can find these clubs on the district or international webpage. When you go to visit a club, tell them about your club and the club contest. Ask for someone to judge or fill a role at your contest. And volunteer to judge, be a timer, or fill any role at their contest. Be sure you leave a flyer or a card, or if it's a Zoom meeting, or Zoom, you can ask who to send the info in case somebody is willing to step up and they can make an announcement for later. Everyone needs volunteers, especially judges. And a lot of times, when you are faced with being a contest chair or a chief judge, you wonder where to begin. This is where you begin. Network with other clubs. For your club, make a plan. Ask your club members to go to specific clubs. Once you've gathered your list of clubs in your area or they can find their own clubs that are near them or, or at a convenient time, so ask them to go to specific clubs. Give them a script so they are, don't wonder what they have to say. And encourage them to participate. They may learn something new for themselves, or they may learn something that will help your club. So let them know that it's more than just asking for help. They could grow within. Follow the rules because they're there for a reason. You can still have a contest with one speaker. It offers an opportunity for advancing the speaker, for the advancing speaker to practice in a familiar environment. When I was an area director, we had a club contest. There was only one international speaker. We conducted the contest with all the same format. Since we didn't need any judges, all of the members of that club provided feedback to the speaker. And this was very helpful in the area contest. Train your crew how to judge by providing a judge's form and explaining the rules on how to be a judge. Make sure you build confidence. The more prepared someone is, the more likely they will follow through. Ask questions. Let me turn off my screen so you can see my face. Hello. Be sure you ask questions. Find a mentor. Just call anyone and, and say, hey, I'm a contest chair, or hey, my club is having a contest and we don't know what to do. There are so many helpful people out there in Toastmasters. Just look them up, send an email, ask them if they've ever done it. Our club happens to meet in person. It's one of the largest clubs in Austin, and it's looked up to for its well-run and well-organized meetings because most of the time, we don't need to fill roles. We have plenty of people to fill those roles. You're always welcome to visit our club. And you're welcome to come to our club contest and ask for volunteers. Using those encouraging and enthusiastic <laughs> pointers that I just gave you, I'm sure that you will have a successful club meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that wonderful presentation from Darlene. And I will go ahead and remove your spotlight. And I want to just check and see if anyone has any questions at the moment. So I had one particular question that uh, I'd like to ask of probably Darlene. Uh, what would you say to somebody who is in a club that uh, they've never competed before, 
and you're trying to encourage them to compete, what might you say to them to get them to try, even though they might be scared to get up there under a competition spotlight? Well, for me personally, I would say, I'll help you. <laughs> huh? Like, what is it? What kind of speech do you want to give? You know, how, what are you trying to work on? And then I explained the benefit of just trying and giving a speech anyway. One, it's a speech they can mark off on their pathways. They can get excellent feedback and just the experience. If they think that they want to be a public speaker or they want to do a public uh, contest, if they want to do another contest in the future, this is great practice. Great. Thank you very much for that. And one of the things that I encourage about contests is you learn more from doing this than probably almost any other type of speech that you would give. Taking it to that level of the A game, practicing a speech over and over again. I mean, I have to tell you guys that usually I only give a speech once. And I'm lucky if I've made time to even practice that speech. When you're competing, you give that speech over and over and over. So whenever you see these amazing speakers and you think, I could never do that, keep in mind, these amazing speakers have given that speech 50 times, 100 times, and constantly changing it up. I've known Mike Carr, one of our international champions, who's also a part of Austin Toastmasters and a great coach for many people in our district. He's an amazing example. We've got a lot of them, amazing examples in our district, but he has been competing since I first met him when I joined Toastmasters in 2009 at Austin Toastmasters. And he was competing at that time. So he's been a Toastmasters more than 25 years. And before he won uh, international speech contest about two years ago as the world champion of public speaking, he'd probably been in at least several dozen contest contests where he got to almost the top, but he didn't make it quite. And he kept trying and kept at it. And that's how he got to the top. You know, just like they say, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, baby, practice. <laughs> That's what it's all about. So if you want to get to be the best speaker, this takes it to a whole new level. So I would encourage you, whether you're brand new to Toastmasters or you've been there for a long time, at the very least, compete in the Table Topics Contest. And if you've got a little experience under your belt, start by practicing our international speech. We do have a, as in the next month in October or November, we have some content or in November, we have some classes that you can take on speech writing that can help you write a winning speech, as well as a class that teaches you how to win at table topics. Those are some of our continuing education classes. But let me go ahead and turn to our final panelists. And I want to- I actually have well, one question okay, yes, before go you ahead, move on. Andy. Yes. One of the things that I think about, because our club is made up of a lot of senior folks who've been there, done that, and they, they want to step back and be a little bit more quiet, and a lot of really new folks that are not through level two yet, so they're not able to do the international, but when my club found out the table topics, like, everybody went, oh, I'm in. So, it takes almost nothing to do that. You don't need right. any experience. So, so from it just my takes guts. I really, really want to make sure that we, even at a club level, that we have both. Mm -hmm. A, is it inappropriate for me to nudge certain people in another direction to make sure we have both? And if it's not inappropriate, what's the best way to do it? Well, I always say nudge. I nudge people constantly. Uh, generally, people don't make decisions or move forward into a, into a space of discomfort unless generally they're pushed gently. <laughs> you know, sometimes those birdies never leave the nest unless you, you know, push them out of the nest so they learn to fly. That's what you do with some of your Toastmasters. Even if they think I'm not prepared yet, so it's not about being prepared. It's about the experience. It's just about just trying it and seeing how it went. At the very least, you 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 know you you get the experience in, and you might even win and move forward. And even if your club doesn't have a contest on its own, because we do have a lot of small clubs who aren't necessarily focused on putting together a, a contest in that environment, you can always have the club nominate a person or two for each of those contests to go on to the area contest. But I want to see 
every area contest filled with at least four to five uh, com uh, competitors in both of those contests. Yeah, so, so we are having our club contest. We've selected dates. We, you know, I told everybody in the club, members and board, just just know that when we signed up to do this, we all agreed to su to support. So when I tap you on the shoulder and ask you what role you're playing in the contest, let me know if it will be a part of the contest logistics or if you're competing and if you're competing, which which category, because everyone gets to play a part. <laughs> <laughs> and you can play a judge. You could be the yeah. judge. You, know, well, you can play any of these roles. And keep in mind, as Toastmasters, we actually signed a Toastmasters promise to step into any role that you're asked to do. Yep. Whether you're ready or not, you just do it. And that's one of the most important lessons I've learned in life. Sometimes they say, we want you to go walk across those coals. And I know that that's the only way I'm ever going to learn and grow. You just sometimes have to swallow and say, okay, well, I trust you're not going to do anything that's going to kill me, so I'm going to try it. And at the very least, you will learn from it. We and all Darlene, I'm just going to say, I think you were maybe a judge or something for our club contest last year, and I have your number in my phone, so. <laughs> <laughs> Although as a leader, I've I also learned how you. to say no, but if I'm available, <laughs> I will. I always try to do my best to help out. But then again, I think everybody, it shouldn't just be a few of us leaders. I think everybody at every level can step up and learn from this. Because in Toastmasters, our whole point is Toastmasters is we're here to fail forward. Yep. In other words, we step into the discomfort, try things we've never done before that we're not very good at. But the only way you get good at it is you do just like what a baby does to learn how to walk. You just get up and do it over and over and over until you finally figure it out. And the rest of us are here to support you so you don't have to do it too many times before you learn. Well, I do wanna move on to our next panelist and Desmond is certainly very familiar to almost everyone in the district for the last, gosh, I don't know, almost 10 years, maybe more. But Desmond is, uh, says that being a leader within your club is one of the most important roles to take when ensuring that the group works together as one, uh, you wanna to work together as one unit to build a solid foundation. We are teams, we're here to support each other. Currently, our mission is to hold the best contest possible throughout the contest season. Desmond has, been a, has a contest Bible, which means it's got almost everything you could need to know, and, and that has been enjoy, enjoyed by many as a complete set of tools needed to run an official Toastmasters contest. Desmond Call Calloway has been a Toastmaster since July 2015. He's held roles including club extension chair, speakers bureau co-chair, club president, sergeant at arms, VP public relations, as well as being the current and past area director and a past division director. So he's been through the mill with many of these leadership positions and he's earned his DTM at the end of the 2019-2020 Toastmasters year, something we're all hoping everybody goes for. And he's an IT professional, improv acting coach and devout parent. He enjoys sharing what he has learned as he grows with his experience. Please do welcome Desmond Calloway. Thank you very much, Bart. Now, I, I don't have a presentation, so don't worry. I'm not going to share a PowerPoint right this moment, but I am going to share a lot of information with you. <clears throat> you can actually thank Livia Mitchell for why I have a contest Bible. You see, when I joined Toastmasters in July of 2015, the first thing I did was table topics. The second thing I did was compete in the humorous speech contest. I don't know if it was my lack of ability to say no, or the fact that I actually am overly competitive by nature. <laughs> but contests have always been very, very, very big for me. So much so that I wanted to learn everything there is about it. So what's the first thing you need to know? Well, first thing, find where your resources are. If you go to tmd55.org, there's actually a page dedicated just to the documentation and the FAQs of a contest. 
You can find much of what you're looking for simply by going there. Secondly, be familiar with the TM website, the Toastmasters International website. They actually have a lot of the resources that you could be looking for even at the 11th hour. Lastly, these are gonna be virtual contests. And even when we go back in person, some of these tools can be used at that level as well, such as a random name or number generator for picking the order of speakers. So where do we begin today? First and foremost, the contest rulebook. And you're gonna start seeing uh, forms and what have you drop into chat as I'm speaking. Don't worry, it's not spam. It's me actually giving you exactly what we're talking about today. Because why should you have to look for everything when I have what you're looking for on my desktop? <laughs> so, <clears throat> You're looking for the contest rule book, which is form 1171 and available to every Toastmaster and updated by August of every year. That is, as it's been said twice tonight, your Bible. Every rule that has changed as a result of discovery of another loophole that someone has figured out in the last contest season is in that book, as well as a few forward-thinking rules. Please familiarize yourself with the rules in that book. You don't have to memorize them, okay? You're, you're not like me and addicted to contest. No, <laughs> but definitely have a copy of that rule book available, not just on your desktop, but even on your cell phone. That will give you an opportunity to say, hey, I have a protest. Well, according to this rule on this page of the rule book, subsection this, you have to lodge the protest with me or with, and you'll be able to quote the rules verbatim. Now, next thing, you wanna make sure that your meetings flow accordingly. Time is of the essence. So how do you manage that time? Well, you stick to a script. And believe it or not, there are scripts for every potential contest out there. So much so that, oh geez, I think I have updates for updates for updates in every folder of my computer. <laughs> These scripts are used not just to tell you what to say, when to say, and why, but to ensure that the meeting runs according to plan. You don't want there to be any questions of, did I cover this with this group? Did I say the correct thing? Are these the correct guidelines that we need to run the contest by. Okay, and I think the, uh, through the four main scripts that you're going to need into chat already, but in the off chance that I missed one or two, don't worry, I, I'll, I'll throw my email in there towards the end of the presentation as well. So you can ask and I, and I can send it out to you. Now, next thing that you're going to need, you're going to need the documentation for each of the contests that we're going to have. Yes. There is still actual paperwork, even though it's virtual, okay? So if you're going to be taking pictures of the members or doing videos, it is definitely advisable to have a photo and video release. Then you also kind of want to make sure that you have a way to say who won. So the announcements form for the contest winner. And you want to definitely, definitely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, be able to, and God forgive me, I'm switching to a, a different one here. There we go. Have the right version of scripts or rules 
for each eventuality. You want to have the certificates that are specific to the contest given. Well, Toastmasters International actually has pre-established kits with every form you could need. And since we've been virtual, it's been so much easy, easier to go through and grab all these documents and just keep them as up-to-date as I can, even though they do change things every six months, it seems. <laughs> but definitely, look at those last two zip uh, folders I sent you. Those have almost every form you can need for the specific contests that we're having this year, international and table topics. Next, you're gonna to want to have a way to select your speaking order. That is something that is built into every single version of contest. Whether it be by number or by name, these two websites that I just dropped in the chat are the ones that I would suggest using that are built on random number generators or a selectable name will, and actually meet the standards for fair selections. As a matter of fact, with the name will, as soon as a person's name is pulled, their name is removed from the will to continue with the next rotation. That's the way it's actually supposed to be done as per Toastmasters International. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot of things at you, right? So these are all the things that you must, must have, right? Well, there's something else that's most important that you have. Have fun. No one likes to go to a boring meeting. No one likes to go to a snooze fest. And definitely no one likes to go to a contest that is so rigid that all you recognize are the rules being followed. Okay, have a contest where you have costumes being worn. Maybe it's Comic-Con themed or Star Wars themed. I have my Darth Vader mask here waiting for that one. Make sure that you have fun, introduce that, that notion that you can still enjoy a contest, even though you're not able to physically touch the individuals. Now, there are also going to be questions coming from every member. Well, how can I make sure that I can speak accordingly? Simple. Know your speaking space. Generally, however, why you open your hands out from shoulder to shoulder is how much speaking space you have. If you feel comfortable standing, make sure you have room behind your chair to stand. You can definitely still get the most out of the contest experience by speaking to the camera. Just like I can get the most out of hearing Bart's voice by turning it right back over to him. Any other questions, Des? Thank you, Desmond. And yeah, I want to open it up to questions. I'm sure we've covered a lot and probably have quite a few questions in our minds. But if you would like to share at this point, I would like to ask one question of Desmond. Uh, what if a club is small and somewhat struggling, but they still want to have a contest? What might you recommend they do when they said, well, we don't have the resources to be able to do that, even though we want to have a contest? Okay, so your club is small. You want to have a contest, you don't have the resources. First things first, buddy up with another club. There is nothing wrong with having a joint club contest, meaning the resources that that club as larger may have, can also be used for your smaller club. Also, I would suggest making sure that even if it's just one or two people in each part of the contest, as Darlene said, follow the rules. Go through the motions because at each level of the contest, 
that person is still going to have to know what to expect. Mm. So follow through the entire process, no matter if it's one person or six people. Right. Well, thank you very much for that. And I think Blanca had a question there. Yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I'm tech challenged, curious right now about those electronic signatures on those contest forms. How do you do it? <laughs> do you have to download a special app for a, an electronic signature? Or you so, just type it in? I, I've been out of uh, uh, leadership uh, and contest for about three years. So I'm just now dipping my feet in the water again. So uh, I hope my question is not, uh, you know, a dumb no, no. question. Your, your question is 150% valid because even my wife has an issue with trying to get e-signatures and she, she teaches CTE classes at a high school. Okay. This is how you do. First and foremost, have the free version of Adobe Acrobat Reader. Oh, Built okay. into Adobe Acrobat Reader is an e-sign portal that will allow you to put your own personal e-signature there. A second tool that's useful is, believe it or not, Microsoft Office. Because Microsoft Office can now create its own PDFs within Word, Excel, and what have you, you actually may be able to create an e-signature there, save it as a picture, and just copy paste directly onto the PDF. A last suggestion I would make, and this is one that I make tongue in cheek. There are free versions of software out there like Adobe that will give you full flexibility of using the PDF at every level. I have to go back through and make sure I update my list, but LibreOffice has a part within it that allows you to create e-signatures. And there's actually a website for VeriSign that allows you to create an e-signature as well. Um, if I were to suggest something, just get Adobe Acrobat Reader. It's an easy, quick way to do it for yourself because you're not the one responsible for everyone else's signature, just yours. Thank you for that, Desmond. And I would also recommend that if anyone's going to compete in the contest, get you know, register for a version of Zoom or whatever online platform you use that has the ability to record and record yourself. Now, of course, many of you also have smartphones and you, know, you could use your smartphone to record yourself, but get used to how you present online because that's, these are still going to be online presentations, especially if you move up. I mean, the club may have a live club contest, which you can do, but when you get higher up, it's all going to be online. And so learning how to give your speech in this environment, you know, noticing where your limitations are, you know, are you going to stand back here? Are you going to stand up when you do it? You know, are you going to play with just like when Mike Carr gave his speech, he was doing a lot of playing with what he was doing with the camera and just kind of getting people's attention and, uh, you know, having a lot of fun with it. You practice your lighting. You know, here I have a, a virtual background, so I have to have a very bright light so that it can it, it does so that I don't disappear in the background, uh, as well as I can also set the lighting to saying, well, I've got it kind of a darker room so it can set it for a more sensitive camera. You can also buy cameras and as well as uh, microphones for better sound quality and better video quality. And these are very inexpensive. They do not cost much money at all. So it, you can learn so much about how to present well online because even though COVID is going away to some extent, it has permanently changed the landscape of how we communicate. Uh, so learning how to communicate well on Zoom and other platforms like this, as well as when you meet in person, they're both equally important. So let me get one question from Desmond and then from Blanca. Yes. Uh, well, I actually wanted to add on to that right quick. Um, mm -hmm. When you, and, I, I, and I'm trying to remember my thought as I'm going here, with the virtual platforms or what have you, especially since TI has already voted, yes, the contest is going to be 
virtual as of right now. You want to make sure that you familiarize yourself with those cameras. If you don't have a webcam on your laptop or desktop already, I can recommend some to you because the one I'm using right now is a 2K camera and I only spent 20 bucks on it. A lot of the webcams that were sold out everywhere throughout the pandemic are now back in stock. So don't, don't feel afraid to jump out there and even experiment with webcams. I have some that I've reviewed for people that are actually worth about 80 bucks. And I only spent $10 on them. All because that you find it very quickly on Amazon. And if people want to know how to get in touch with Desmond, he's listed on the TMD55.org website is one of the... the the leaders with Toastmasters District 55. So you can find his information there. Blanca, we had just a minute. So I wanted to get your question or comment and then we will wind it up. Yes. Uh, so supposedly then from what I'm understanding, what I've gathered so far, thank you, Desmond. Uh, all laptops, no phones. You cannot use a cell phone for a competition. Mm. Are people uh, being informed that Please don't use a cell phone due to technical issues and so, put a webcam on a phone, cell phone. So there's, there, there's, there are ways to do that. People are going to be informed, though, as far as what's allowed and not allowed for the contest. Uh, the plus side is you can still practice and become familiar by using your phone. Okay. The downside is and a lot of people have experienced this, not every laptop's webcam is very good. Not every desktop can handle a uber powerful camera or webcam. But there are ways that you can affordably and you know, quickly be able to uh, participate. And if anyone's having any issues with it or what have you, I mean, heck, I, I have a camera I can loan someone right now. Well, in that in that vein, uh, this is why it's so important to know and get information from others who are well resourced and know where to get these resources. And so you know how to prepare yourself in the best way possible for a contest at any level. I want to thank our three great panelists, Blanca Kelly and Darlene Cross, as well as Desmond Calloway, for a wonderful presentation. We do have another presentation that will be coming up next on leadership essentials. These are the leadership skills that everyone should master. I hope you stay with us. We were going, we're going to go to a different Zoom room at this point, but I want to thank you all for being here, and I wish you the best of luck during the contest season. So thank you all, and we'll see you again. Please do check about the continuing education program schedule and sign up early. Thank you for your time. We'll see you soon. And I'll be in the next room in just a moment. I'll open up that room. Thanks, guys. <laughs>